Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we're going to learn about the constellation known as Orion the Hunter. This is easily one of the most recognized star patterns in the world, and it can both be seen in the northern and southern hemisphere. This is a constellation that I tell my students, you have to learn this one because it acts as a guide to all the other constellations surrounding it. It's represented as a hunter, and it's a very ancient constellation. Orion is a star pattern that has the oldest known records of it. The artifact that has this depiction of Orion is estimated to be 32,000 to 38,000 years old. So it's named after Orion, which was a figure in Greek mythology. He was a hunter and Orion can be seen throughout the world because it's located right along the celestial equator. And if we were to point out where Orion is, that's what the star pattern looks like, at least a portion of it. Most people recognize Orion as these main seven stars. And what's really great about these seven stars is that they're of similar magnitude. So it really makes it easy to find in the sky. So when can you see it? Remember here at Learn the Sky, I always teach from the perspective of the Northern Hemisphere because that's where I live. I have never seen Orion from the Southern Hemisphere, um, but for the Northern Hemisphere, it's best seen in the winter months. And you want to look for the Belt Stars asterism. This, of course, is one of the most recognized star patterns in the sky. And as I said, each of these main stars are of similar magnitude. And I found out a really fun fact about this constellation is that all these seven main stars are expected to become supernovae, which is really, really cool. There are some other things that really stand out in this constellation as well. The Great Orion Nebula is right underneath those belt stars, and there are some well-known stars such as Betelgeuse, or some pronounce it uh, Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse. I was taught that it was pronounced Betelgeuse, so that's the way I kind of, that's my default pronunciation of it. And then also Rigel right here is another really bright blue star. Now we'll take a look at the star pattern that Orion makes across the sky. Here we have the official star map of Orion released by the International Astronomical Union. And the things I want to point out to you are to show you how Orion can be a guide to everything surrounding it in the sky. So here you can see the belt stars. This is the best way to find Orion is to look for these three stars in a row. And you can use these stars to point down to Canis Major. Um, which is this bright star is known as Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. And then you can also use the belt stars to point up towards Taurus right here, which is Taurus is represented as a bull. If you want to learn more about that constellation, go see that video. Then you can use Rigel and Betelgeuse. If you draw an imaginary line through those two bright stars, it'll lead you to Gemini. If you do the opposite knee and shoulder star, you have Safe here and Bellatrix, draw an imaginary line up this direction, you will find Auriga. You can also use the two shoulder stars to guide you towards Monoceros, which is known as the Unicorn, a super faint constellation. I've got a video on that. Be sure to see um, more about that video in the links posted below. But you can also use the shoulder stars if you go past Monoceros over in this direction is where you would find Canis Minor. So if you can find Orion in the sky, you can find everything else. So let's get some practice with how to find Orion. So first, we've seen this picture before. Here is where Orion is. You can see the belt stars. You can see the sword of Orion. And you use the belt stars to point towards Aldebaran, which is the bright star in Taurus. Here's the V-shaped face of Taurus, and then here's the Pleiades. This is a planet that is traveling through Taurus because it is a zodiacal constellation. So remember, zodiacal constellations are ones in which the sun, moon, and stars pass through. Let's get another view of Taurus, because remember, the more pictures you see, the better you can get at identifying these constellations. And in this one, you can see also another familiar star pattern known as 
the Winter Triangle. The Winter Triangle is not a constellation, but an asterism. And an asterism, I've got a whole video on that, so be sure to go see that video. But an asterism is really another shape or pattern either within a constellation or made up of bright stars of constellations, and you can use it to find other constellations in the sky. So here we have Orion, down here is Sirius, that's the bright star in the constellation known as Canis Major, and then here is Procyon, or Procyon, I've heard it pronounced both ways, and this two, um, this small two-star constellation is known as Canis Minor, and these are the hunting dogs of Orion. So again, if we were to use Orion as a guide to the sky, this is what I teach all of my students. You can use the shoulders to point to Canis Minor, you can use the belt to point to Canis Major. Right in this arena is Monoceros, the unicorn constellation, a modern day constellation. And then here, if you use these two stars to point to Gemini, this points to Auriga, and then this points to Taurus. So I will say it again, if you can find Orion, you can find all the other winter constellations in the Northern Hemisphere. I've got a few more pictures for us to review because of course practice makes perfect. Here we have Orion and we have Canis Major, Orion's humping, hunting dog. There's also another constellation called Lepus, the hare, and if we were to point these out, here is where they are. So we've got Orion right here. Here is Lepus. This is um, known as the hare. And then we have Canis Major here. You can also see some of the Milky Way right here. It's pretty faint in the background, but it is there. And Orion is that constellation that I have no shortage of pictures. So as we go through, you should be able to see in this, you should, in this picture, you should see Orion. You should see Canis Minor, and then you should see a portion of Canis Major, but really only that bright star. And can you see that winter asterism triangle? Or winter triangle asterism, I should say. If we were to keep going, I've got more pictures. This is another gorgeous photo because what really shines through is the color of the stars, which most of the main stars are blue, but Betelgeuse is an orangish colored star. And you can also see some of the celestial objects that are shining through in this long exposure photograph as well. Now, Orion is not only a part of the asterism known as the Winter Triangle, but there's also another asterism it's a part of called the Winter Hexagon. And if you connect some of the brightest stars in the winter sky, it makes these different star patterns. So here we have all the different constellations that are within the winter sky, and you can see there's a lot here. We've got Taurus, Auriga, Gemini, Canis Minor, Monoceros, a super faint constellation, uh, Canis Major, and and Lepus. So the Winter Triangle, remember, is a useful asterism that connects these three constellations in the sky, and if we were to point it out, that's where it's located. The three constellations it connects is Orion, Canis Major, and Canis Minor. And the stars that are connected with the Winter Triangle are these three. But we also have the Winter Hexagon. Here I'm hoping you can see the easily see the winter triangle but the winter hexagon is where we're connecting all the other constellations that have very bright stars and it's a very large asterism so it can actually be challenging to point out because it is so large in the sky Oftentimes when I'm stargazing, there's either a mountain in the way or I'm surrounded by a rim of trees. So if you want to find the winter hexagon, you want to find like a wide open field to observe this in. And if we were to point out the winter hexagon, this is where it is located and it connects all the brightest stars that can be seen in the winter sky in the northern hemisphere. The stars include Pollux, we have Capella, we have Aldebaran, Rigel, Sirius, and Procyon. And if we were to point out where all those constellations are in the sky, here is where they're located. 
So the winter hexagon is a great asterism just to help you find other constellations in the sky. And one other trick that I use to really test my students if they know where Orion is, is I give them star trail pictures. So there's a few things you can see in this star trail picture. Can you find the belt stars of Orion? Can you find the winter hexagon? Can you find Sirius? the brightest star in the night sky. So if we were to point all these things out, and I, I love giving these to my students because they're like, how are we supposed to pick this out? But if you look carefully, you can just see, kind of make those connections with the pattern you already know. So here is where Orion is. You have the belt stars of Orion. You have Canis Minor right here. Here's Canis Major. And then right here is where you would connect the winter triangle. Let's get one more shot here. Are you able to figure out where Orion is? Look for the belt stars. That's the key to finding this constellation. And then can you find the winter triangle? So here's the belt stars, and then that's where the winter triangle would be. So this is like the ultimate test if you really, really know your constellations is to use star trail pictures. And I think Orion is really the best one to do this with because the belt stars make these, these three long star trail pictures. Sky. Let's review some of the ancient mythologies that are associated with it. So first, the earliest known records we have of any constellation is that of Orion. And here you can see the prehistoric Aurignacian mammoth ivory carving that was found in a cave in 1979 in West Germany. Its age estimate is between 32,000 to 38,000 years old, and it's pretty small in size. But its proportions of the figure are very similar to that of Orion. It has a very slim waist, just like the belt stars. And then here you can see the left leg is shorter, and that is very similar to that of Orion. After that, we find record of Orion in the Babylonian star catalogs, and Orion was represented as the heavenly shepherd. The Babylonian star catalogs are really important for the recording and timing of agricultural activities. It also recorded the path of the moon, the planets, it had a solar calendar, and it really, really was important for us to understand how the heavens move so these agricultural activities could be timed. And many of these constellations on the Babylonian star catalogs were predecessors of the zodiac constellations. Next we'll jump to Greek mythology, which Orion was represented as the son of Poseidon. And Artemis, one of the stories I discovered of Orion, and keep in mind there are many stories of Orion, Artemis, the god of the moon in the hunt, fell in love with Ryan, but her twin, Apollo, dared his sister to hit Orion in the sea with her arrow. But she was unaware that this was Orion, and it unfortunately killed him. When his body washed ashore, she realized what she had done, and in her grief, she placed his body in the sky along with his hunting dogs. It is said that that is why the moon is cold and lifeless, because Artemis lost the love of her life and was inconsolable. Orion, however, quickly recovered in the sky as he chased the Pleiades, which were the seven beautiful nymphs in the constellation of Taurus. In one myth that I found, Orion, right here, fell in love with the Pleiades, the um, seven sisters, and the seven sisters were the daughter daughters of Atlas and Pleione. He started pursuing them, so Zeus scooped them up, placed them in the sky, and the Pleiades are representative of these seven sisters, and it is said that Orion is still chasing them in the sky. But again, these are only a small portion of the mythological tales of Orion. Remember that the mythologies of the stars vary according to time, place, and culture, and there is no one true mythology for any constellation, just a variety of them. We've come to the end of our video about Orion, so let's review everything we've learned so far. Orion is represented as a hunter from Greek mythology, and it's best seen in the winter months in the northern hemisphere. It's classified as a seasonal constellation since the moon, sun, and stars do not pass through it. The best way to find it is to look for the belt stars. 
and also the rectangular shape that these stars make as well. Orion is one of the most recognized star patterns in the world, so to me it's one of the easiest ones to find. There are a few celestial objects that are located in the boundaries of this constellation, such as the Orion Nebula, which can be seen with the unaided eye, and if you have an opportunity to look at it with binoculars, it really is spectacular. There's also the Horsehead Nebula right here. I'll be having another video come out about the celestial objects of this constellation. So I wish you luck finding Orion. To me, it's one of the easiest star patterns to find and one of the most important to know because it points to all the other star patterns that surround it. Remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to find the star patterns. So I wish you luck and clear skies. Keep looking up.